All right. So we're just going to go over some Wyckoff stuff, right? We're going to go over the law of cause and effect and the law of effort and results. And away we go, right? No whammies, big money. Oop. So as you see, right, so if you're just looking at a chart, this would be an area that's the causation, causation, right? All these highlighted places are causation. And then these long trends would be the effect, right? I couldn't come up with an actual title for the slide. Um, so it's all causes fault, right? Um, because of you, like the song, or how it affects us, or are you affecting me, right? So uh, we had some really good titles that we could have used. Um, but again, this one right here, the structure might not uh, look like a clear causation for like this resulting move. Um, it is, and you could see it is because of the time that it takes within this channel, and this would be like an advanced uh, type of like structure, an upward tr um, trending structure, but it's still important to note. And again, something to look at, right? So uh, we're gonna keep it simple, stupid. Um, the cause generated by the uh, the effect generated by the cause will be in direct proportion to that cause, right? So. This is why when we get like a sideways trending market for a while, um, most of the times we'll get a large move resulting from that, whereas a double bottom or like a rally base rally, those resulting moves are going to be a lot less um, like aggressive almost, right? In phases of sideways price movement, the process accumulation and distribution take place, right? Again, going over saying when the market moves sideways, that causation is going to be resulting in some sort of big move away from it, which is either going to be accumulation, right, upward or downward trend, right, the effect. Um, and this is also going to be seen with the stagnation of price. We're going to drop into the zone, right. Um, we've all seen Van every morning absolutely love where we are with price. Uh, he gets super excited, right. And why is that? It's because of the, well, the stagnation of price. Um, we're not moving a lot. We're we're getting whippy motions up and down. We're not getting anything really there, and we're barcoding, right? Something's happening. I fucking hate this area. <laughs> so, some types, right? So again, this is going to be the types of causations. You have the climax. Um, I'm not really going to go, whatever. Uh, the movement, the last impulse. This is going to be uh, when we see just like a pump, and then you're going to get like a low volume pullback or something. Uh, then you got the double top, double bottom, pullback. Uh, and this is why like we went over a couple weeks ago with uh, Van's TA session, how to really make sure that we're switching trends from an uptrend into a downtrend. That would be one of those things. And then a bear and a bull trap. And that's going to be those, right? The key is up to 20%. Like I said, you could read it for yourself, and away we go. Um, part two, right? This is why we're doing two of them, just because we're going to go back to back. It's really easy. Um, efforts and results, right? <clears throat> so what is efforts and results? This is going to be really important for you guys, especially with Van system. Um, it's because it's going to use a lot of volume, right? Volume is the cornerstone for Wyckoff and VPA. It's how we notice um, participation, right? which means uh, institutional traders, big money, large volume, large traders, right? Um, harmony and divergence, right? Harmony means it's all good in the hood, sign of strength with the overall move, right? This is going to be the big green dildo candle with a lot of volume behind it. Um, harmony just means that everything's in concert with each other, right? Uh, divergence is anomaly, right? Anomaly. Uh, sign of weakness with the overall move, low volume pullback. So again, when we say um, sign of strength with the overall move with harmony, that doesn't necessarily mean that it has to be a bullish move. It could be uh, a bearish move, but as long as the volume is correlated uh, positively with the candle, then we're all good, right? Same thing with the divergence. It doesn't necessarily have to be a bullish move, but it just doesn't show the strength of that current move, right? Uh, candlestick analysis, that's going to be the next slide. Um, we're also going to, it shows the lack of interest, right? What is the lack of interest going to be? It's going to be low volume, possible, um, and this is going to be possible after a big move, right? This can be continuation or reversal. So this is when you're going to see possibly uh, a low volume doji 
on top of a range, right? Um, and this might be uh, a rally based rally, or this might be a rally based drop because there's a lack of interest and no more people want to buy at that range, so we just sell off. Um, and the market acts like Dill Dill's Twitter or, or Tinder, right? It's gonna be dry as fuck. There's not gonna be a lot of action. There's not gonna be a lot of volume. It's just gonna be slow as shit. Nobody's gonna be interested, right? <laughs> Fucking got on. All right. So how it started, how it's going, and some knowledge nuggets, right? So as you can see with these this, these run up candles, the volume is direct correlation, right? Everything is in harmony makes sense right small candles small volume bigger candles higher volume right with that being said then you see a high volume doji right that's divergent doesn't make sense the littlest candle here has the the highest volume right makes no sense divergent it means that that's an anomaly and that we should be on the lookout because something's gonna happen right and you're gonna see that here right high volume here right how's it going I have a high volume candle here, a divergence on the back end, and now we're going to go down. Another one, it's the same thing. We're going to see all this pump, and then we're going to see that low volume pullback. Right, high volume here on a candle, and low volume here. Doesn't make sense. You could see the low volume pump here, and the pullback here. Right, this is going to be the blow off and everything else. Low volume, blah, 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 blah. Right, knowledge nuggets. Fun little fact that this is a 0.110 gram Yukon BC pure gold nugget, nugget, and it's handpicked in Alaskan, right? Believe it or not, that goes for about $17. I thought it would be more. It's not. All right, so uh, if we believe the movement is an impulse, we should expect it to be high volume at the origin. So what does that actually mean? What does it mean if we expect it to be an impulse, right? It means that th we believe that this is going to be a width trend move. So we're going to have a push, low volume pullback, and then that impulse move. Well, that impulse move, we should be seeing a high volume candle for that signal. We want to see a high volume VPA signal that signals that pump, right, at the origin, uh, indicate, indicates institutional presence. So what is this actually going to show us, and why does this actually make a difference in uh, institutional presence, blah, 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 blah. Well, what ends up happening, that candle is going to be a high volume candle. Because institutions and everybody else are going to be like, all right, this is a good price. Whether it's actual institutions or if it's just algos, we don't care. We want to see that high volume. We want to see that volume pick up. We want to see that intention pick up and that interest pick up. And that's going to be that institutional presence. And it's going to tell us that all right, maybe, you know, I know most of y'all like uh, longer time frames and bigger moves. But I'm going to take that trade and I'm going to take two thirds off as soon as we get back to that swing high. And then I'm going to leave a runner to try to get me a little bit more on the top end. But I know at least I'm going to probably most likely top check the top of that structure, whether it's 30 points, 20 points, or 100 points, right? I'm going to take that and take it to the top. Um, supports the movement, increase in continuation probability, right? Um, big words, trends is your friend. Don't be an idiot. All right. Um, now, if there's a lack of volume at its uh, origin, we should expect this to be a correlation. Right, so what does this mean? This is going to be the high vol, or um, I'm sorry, it's going to be a low volume um, doji at top of a range, a low volume hanging man at the top of a range. Um, any of those kind of signs, right? It's going to say that it's lacks yet institutional presence. So it's going to be a correction move. It's not going to be a big correction move, right? Unless this has gone on for an extended period of time, which that would be a different situation, and we could cover those, but. If this is like first impulse move, right, or second impulse move, so first or second leg, and we have like low volume, it's safe to say that that trend's going to continue, and this is just going to be a low volume pullback, and we're going to be looking for that high volume VPA sign to continue with the trend, right? Now, <clears throat> of course, this could be different if this is like an extended extended range. Now we're looking for like actual trend exhaustion, but um. The low volume denotes divergence. Those are going to be really hard to actually hold on to for a long period of time. Um, unless, it, like I said, it is that extended market um, vibe. Um, and then remember, children, the market only moves on large institutions. That's why we're looking for the high volume. That's why we like 
anything with high volume, right? Um, shows that institutions are there, shows actual involvement, and then it shows that the the market is being primed to move, right? Uh, so let's talk about it, right? I think this is also a really, really interesting picture that we need to be a little like cognizant of, especially breaking or playing the breaks out of these ranges right now in this current market sense, right? You see that harm, uh, harmonistic, I think that's the word, um, pump to break that level. Then we see that low volume pullback, right? And then again, high volume. Again, it's high volume. It's still in harmony, but it's still a high volume candle here, right? Establishing that floor for that pump with that low volume harmonistic candle again for that low volume pullback. And then we see that pump. Whereas we see high volume here, divergent high volume candle here, right? High volume again, and then that low volume pullback correction back up, right? This low volume right here at the origin says this is a correction. And these, this high volume said that this is the actual true move back down, saying that price isn't going to get accepted at this floor right here, right? Um, and that's the last slide for that. So does anybody have questions? We could talk about it. Nobody? Going once? Going twice. Okay. With this last case right here? Okay, so <clears throat> here we have that volume pump up, right? I think Van, I think this in uh, his system would be like an exhaustion candle or whatever else. We're taking profits here, right? You're selling into strength. So a lot of times I would imagine that this would be break of a level and that people are taking profits, right? And then when you pull back, you're having this low volume pullback. Why? Because nobody's actually selling. So you have this pump volume peaks at the highs because there's combined buying and selling. Yeah. So you're getting retail to buy in here and you're getting um, institutions to sell, right? So you're getting that like combination to happen, high volume. Then you're getting a, a pullback. Low volume, not a lot of actions happening. Nobody's really looking to sell anymore. So you probably have retail that bought in here no longer really wants to sell. And because of that, you're going to have that slight pullback. And then again, institutions buy and pump. But I just kind of think of it more like price re uh, acceptance and price um, rejection. And I'm not 100% sure like the reasoning behind it. or like Nor do I really care about why institutions or whatever might not accept the price. Um, for me, big money will also buy the up the profit target. They aren't like us where they buy and hold. They have so much money they input into the, the yeah, pretty much. And that's also sometimes like I think Van brings up a good point. You could actually see that at some point where they will literally just force the market up in those slowly days and all that kind of stuff where they're just pulling the market to their targets and then saying screw it, they have control. Um, but like with something like this, I see high volume. I see a high volume pump. That's the strength. Uh, after that, I'm looking for some sort of correction. And to see a high volume correction with this, right, to me says that we see like stagnation of price more than likely. We don't see a top. Like if this wick was a high wick, um, then I would be like more interested to say maybe we still bleed up a little bit if this body was like that. But to see like a shaved body like that after a shaved top and then immediate selling, this is showing straight like profit taking in my mind with high volume and continuation on that. Um, and then we have this slow pullback, which is saying like, at this level, nobody's interested in buying and pushing this back up. Like people are still scared to buy this, right? So institutions ain't buying this up yet and retail's too scared to jump in and throw money at the market. So this is pretty much just like people price averaging in or like algos buying up. And then you see as soon as it hits this floor again, I think th this could also be called like bottom fisherman, um, but I can't speak on that too much. But then again, you see it come up to that level, and that immediate dump. That would be all right. Like we we bought here, we rose it up, right? And again, if you look at like fair value gap, right where we break and reject is right where this wick is at, the last part of this little candle here. Um, we had that same situation reversed, right? Um, or literally the same situation. What was it? Friday at uh, 71 where we ran up and then immediately dumped and this is like pretty much the same setup.
Um, and then you come here and then it's immediately just sell off again. And then, like, the reason why um, divergence like this, right? Small body candle with high volume. Why is that divergent? Why do we care? Um, at least for me, like, I read the tape, right? Uh, I like level two. I like the tape. So, for example, if you see, like, a small candle at the top of a range, right? So you see a small candle top of the range with a whole lot of uh, volume. And let's say you saw... Um, ask just paint the tape the whole way through that print right like it just is all ask um and then high ask on level two like it's just painted everywhere well what that's saying to me is that institutions are selling out and this is profit taking so again we're seeing high effort right with low results in that candle that's an anomaly now if we could use like i said the dom or some sort of uh confirmation tool whatever that might be for other people which is rsi or whatever the case may be um we could take a bet and say that's going to reverse here or be able to set our stop very close right with the dom because if we see that you know for easy numbers sake you know 279.30 on qqq is a hard level to break well we can maybe only set our stop five to ten cent above that which correlates to very uh, limited points on uh, NQ and keep our risk tight and still size in for that short or whatever else may be the case. But it just shows that there's a lot of stuff happening with not a lot of movement. And when that usually happens, it's going to be a reversal cause. Again, if you have like a high volume candle at the bottom of a range and you think, see that thing go down and then almost hit a floor, like if you could see a high volume, um, let's say hammer on top of a demand zone, what is that saying? That, that there's a lot of buying that's happening there, right? So if that's holding up that level, it's a hammer at the bottom of a range. Like I'm saying that demand zone's valid, right? I'm going to buy into that, and that's why we could run that thing to the top. So I think I answered that question. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, dope. Anybody else have a question? If not, we're good to go. Good to go.